Hi, my name is Stefan Rinke, um, founder of edumorph.com, and today I want to give you a very short introduction to the new Google Docs um, for use in language teaching. So uh, this should be useful for all language teachers who want to employ a bit of ICT in their language teaching. What you need to use Google Docs uh, in your language lessons is uh, a computer connected to the internet and as a teacher you also need a Google account so that you can create and edit Google documents. Your students need also obviously a computer connected to the internet and a Google Ah, they don't need a Google account anymore since the uh, new version was um, published. So you can now share documents with people who do not have a Google account which makes using this uh, in schools a lot lot easier. Um, because you don't have to set up all students with a Google account. There was also uh, the problem of the age limit uh, when you want to open a Google account. So this is all gone. You can use Google with your students now. How to get to Google Docs? You just point your browser to docs.google.com and if you aren't signed into your Google account or you don't have a Google account you will see something that looks a bit like this depending on the area in which you are. Um, I'm doing this presentation from Germany now and uh, Google is clever enough to realize that I'm in Germany and shows me the German page. Um, the English page looks exactly the same. It's just got English text on it, obviously. Uh, what you need to do then is, on the bottom right, it says uh, if you don't have a Google account, you can set one up. So you click on uh, set up a Google account and then you'll be taken to the Google accounts setup page where you have to enter uh, an email address, you have to set up a password um, and various other things. You just follow the instructions on the screen and that should be pretty straightforward and at the end of the process you have a brand new Google account which you can use for using Google Docs. The first time you then go to docs.google.com you will see something that looks a bit like this. Uh, the big difference being that you will not have any items listed on the right of your screen because you haven't created any yet. Uh, you can see there that I have created various Google Docs. Um, I've created text documents, presentations, spreadsheets. Um, you can have folders as you can see on your left. So you can uh, pretty much use Google Docs the way you would be using uh, an office suite offline on your own desktop computer. There's a button called Create New on the top left which you can use to create your new Google document. So you click on document obviously and that will take you to a screen that looks very similar to that. Now the first thing you should do is, is change the title of your document just by clicki clicking onto Untitled Document. That will open up a new dialog where you can s change the name of the document to something a bit more meaningful. You can see here that you've got various possibilities for formatting text. You can change the font, you can change the font size, you can format in bold, italic, underlined, you can change the font color, you can highlight text and so on and so forth. Um, I think the buttons look very familiar, they should be virtually the same as in your offline office suite. You can also format paragraphs, you can number paragraphs, you can have bullet points, you can indent paragraphs, you can left align, right align, uh, you can have your paragraph centered, you can change the um, line spacing and so on and so forth. You can also insert links into your document. You highlight text first and then click on that chain symbol there. Enter the URL of the web page that you want to direct people to. Click OK and then the text will be highlighted and when you click on it you will be taken to uh, the page that you specified. You can also enter pictures by clicking on the picture symbol and now this is where Google is particularly interesting 
you can share your documents with others which means that people can then simultaneously edit the document via the internet. There are various sharing setin settings. Uh, one of them is you can um, add people by adding their email addresses. Uh, you can change the permissions straight away. For example, uh, every document when you first set it up is private which means that only the people that you specifically invited into your document can um, access the document and edit it but the sharing settings can be changed you can either make it public on the web which means that anybody can find and access the document without having to sign in uh, so this would mean that it's also uh, found through search engines. The next option is uh, that anyone with the link can access your Google document. Uh, when you click on this option you will be given a link that you can share in an email or on Twitter or on uh, Facebook. Wherever you can uh, share a link you can just enter that uh, URL and people will then be taken to your document where there will be either, depending on how you set it up, will be able to just view the document or they can edit the document. Or you can just keep it private, which means, as I showed you at the start, uh, that only people that you specifically invited into your document can access it. You can see here that I have uh, made the document available for people who've got a link to it. So at the top here you can see the link which you just have to copy and paste into um, an instant messaging system, into uh, Skype for example, or you can publish it on Twitter, send it via email and so on and so forth. You can also see that I have invited somebody from edumorph.com um, and you can also see that this person with the email address info at edumorph.com has the a right to edit the document as well. This is how you add people. As you can see, you just type in the uh, email address, click on share, and that will send an email to the people that you've shared the document with, and in the email they will see something like this. I've shared, and then the title of the document, and they just need to click on the document. If they already um, have a Google account, then they can start editing straight away. If they haven't, they will be asked to set it up, unless, of course, you have um, given the right to anybody with the link to edit the document. Just to quickly sum up what people can do with Google Docs, um, the really interesting thing is that people can simultaneously edit the document. They can add and change text, they can change the formatting, they can reorder paragraphs, they can do anything basically that you can do with an offline word processor, but as a team. Now some possible uses for language teaching would be, for example, that you set up a document as a close exercise and uh, students then will have to fill in the blanks and they can do that in a team. Um, and you can have a little competition which team can finish the close exercise first. If you've got an interactive whiteboard, you can put the different solutions to the close exercise uh, on the interactive whiteboard and have people decide whether um, all gaps have been filled in correctly, for example. So this could look something like this. Or you can get um, people to change all the adjectives in a text to their opposites. So you set up a text basically with lots of adjectives in them and you ask students to change all the adjectives into their opposites. Um, a very, very good vocabulary building exercise for example. And again you can set this up as a little competition for example. Adding verb endings to verbs. Um, I used to be a German teacher so I know how hard learning and teaching the verb endings uh, is. Um, so this is a very good exercise for practicing the conjugation of verbs, for example. This is uh, one that is a bit more advanced. Uh, you can start up with a text that is not particularly interesting, uh, a little story, without, for example, any adjectives, without any connectives, so you don't have any buts, ands and ors in there. 
um, it could be that the story just lacks imagination and you ask your students to turn this boring story into an interesting one by for example adding adjectives by connecting sentences um, by adding more detail to the story or and this is probably then the most um, advanced use of it you can ask students to write a text on any given topic collaboratively um, quite often it's useful to assign roles to team members who then have to edit the text collaboratively so that you've got people who are in charge of checking the spellings, people who are in charge of making sure that the verb endings are correct, people who are in charge of making sure that the text is interesting or that the text is actually dealing with the topic that you've uh, set them and so on and so forth so that um, everybody has responsibility for the text but everybody has got their area of uh, specialism as well. Right, these are just some suggestions for using Google Docs in your language teaching. Um, I do appreciate that you took your time and watched this little presentation. Um, thanks again and uh, have a good day. Bye now.